Welcome back. We're looking forward to continue the 11th Igeris HaKadosh. 11th Igeris of Igeris HaKadosh segment, which is literally translated, the Holy Epistles of the Alter Rebbe. <clears throat> We're holding towards the beginning of the 10th. <clears throat> In the original text, it's 228. Page 228, Pirush, so the line begins, the Malka. There's a period and Pirush Ramachi Varim. So <clears throat> I want to just mention here that uh, keep it as a as a uh, you know a space of re- uh, a, 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 uh, a place of reference. <clears throat> In the beginning of last week's class, we had a little bit of a, a we periodically do it, of course, for the newcomers, just to bring perspective a little bit in <clears throat> the segment that we're presently learning, the Geras HaKadosh, which is the fourth segment of the Alter Rebbe, the difference between the first three and the Geras HaKadosh, a little bit of a description and analysis and description of the first, the Kuti Amorim, the Geras HaTshuvah, this again being the fourth, distinct in its style, as it's Igeris, Igeris, its letters written, eventually becomes part of Tanya, part of the Alter Rebbe's penning, these letters, of course, becomes timeless. As the Alter Rebbe was a Isha Liki, a godly, um, like it says, "B'meisha Rabbeinu Tefilu B'meisha Isha Liki, a godly man, a godly human being." And of course, everything the Alter Rebbe penned was eventually becomes part of Tedas Emes, especially this which he <clears throat> publicized, and more so, this became part of the Sefer of Tanya Kadisha. <clears throat> we have many, many other letters of the Alter Rebbe, of course. But these 32 letters became part of the uh, Tanya. Why were they chosen? Again, this was with maximum precision, as we mentioned, I believe, last week as well, that this was uh, the the children of the Alter Rebbe, each one grand and gigantic in his own way, were part of the decision as well. But ultimately, this, the Tanya has the final part, also the Kuntresach, and in the end, there's five segments of Tanya we did mention in the past, this becomes a Tere Shabik Sav of Tere Sachsidus, uh, of Tere Sachsidus, um, thus the number five, similar to Tere Shabik Sav, the actual Tere Shabik Sav. Again, all these different ideas we point, uh, pointed out. We did give a little more of an elaborative background. We do do this periodically, just again, mainly for the newcomers. But we give it, we gave a little bit of a, a, pre, a, a elaborate um, backdrop of the Geres HaKadosh, of the distinct, this distinct, uh, this uh, Segment of the distinction, the, the distinctness of this segment um, of of the Tanya versus the vis a vis the other first three segments, a little bit more of a backdrop, a little bit, and the common thread which you can definitely glean of the overall message of the Geras Hakodesh. So instead of repeating it, we like to sometimes again because there is inevitable newcomers probably you know just tune in and. To have it, it's always good to know and have a little backdrop of this particular segment, what it's all about. So, again, because it was the beginning of the tenth, an easy um, spot of uh, uh, to to um, tap into. Um, so, we'll try to go further immediately or almost immediately, of course. Peter Shramach Kelim Levushim Laha'ara to jump into where we were holding and a little wanted a little more backdrop. Just in the very beginning of the very, this very chapter, this uh, is the second class on the tenth epistle of the Alter Rebbe. Uh, we spoke about this in other places, which you will find it as well. But I believe it was a bit of an elaborate uh, presentation, which is um, which we which with which with which we began last week's class, which is the beginning of this very very Igeres, the tenth of Igeres Hakodesh. All these classes, in general, wherever you're watching them, there's an advantage of you to, to tuning into the original web visiting the original website tanyaonline.com. Simple Tanya Online, one word dot com, um, where you have this previous class as an example, which we're continuing today. As mentioned, that little uh, introduction, a little uh, elaborative introduction of Igeres Sakedish. And as well, all the previous classes. This is the 10th, 
the first line of Egedes HaKedosh, as we mentioned a few times, we did, uh, you see it all on, on, the, on the screen, um, on the site, that is, the, we merited to conclude the entire Lukot Yamorim, Shari Chodamona, which would be the second Egedes HaTshuva, which would be the third segment of Tanya, and, you know, it's it's uh, literally a click away, especially to with technology today, it's seconds to find anything that you're looking for, any particular Patek. Um, we'll just mention that Dr. Rebbe himself cross-references quite a few times, within he gets HaKadosh even, to the previous uh, segments, and many times we do so, and there's a certain point which is discussed in the Geras HaKadosh, and instead of elabor- you know, elaborating on it a little bit uh, with with um, with uh, you know time consuming presentation, we just said you know, for example, I'm just looking at we get we give this class this idea of Ramach Kelim Lavushim Laora. The Alter Rebbe himself explains it very um, expansively in the 23rd chapter of Lukutei Amorim, which is the first segment. A click away. Now Lukutei Amorim page of Gimel is lengthier, but it's easy to find. You look in the text and you see the subject, and you try to find it. We try to find it, or generally, you can see it in the text. You don't have to look at the class or wherever you're learning Tanya. But if you want to follow the class, it's easy to follow. One more advantage, which we mention periodically, that uh, on this site, there's a separate scroll bar for the screen, for the uh, text, excuse me, a separate scroll, scroll bar for the text, as such, understandably easy to follow. So, as mentioned, we are holding Pirush Ramach Kelim Lavushim Laoro, made in Sub Baruch Hu. The explains the mitzvah, what our mitzvahs are all about, rather based on the Pasik, which speaks about Torah in general, that Torah comes from the Yimin of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Chesed of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as Al-Tarebbe explained last, last, week's, last week's class, a click away, that Torah is, of course, Chesed, is drawing the inner spirit and the inner energy uh, of HaKadosh Baruch Hu within creation, which creation without Torah is... is uh, purposeless, but it, of course, to keep it in context, the world was created, we read, Bereshis, Borolikim, Eshashimai, Ba'aretz, Be'ez, Bereshis, the world was created for a, 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 to be infused by it learning Teira, for the Teira itself, Bishvila Teira, Bishvila Yisra, they even learn Teira, they draw the energy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is inherently exist in Teira, the inner workings of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the, the the, the, the core of HaKadosh Baruch the essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, really, the, the, the essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is the life, because that's Hashem Himself, that's the source of life. And the core, the most the deepest parts of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Teira. Like a, the Gemara says, Anoich is an acronym, Anon Nafshik Savis Yavis. Hashem said, I took my soul, I wrote it into Teira, I gave it over to you, I put my soul into Teira, so of course that has the most, that has the energy, Certainly, no comparison to the energy which is invested in creation, to the energy which is invested in Teda, or more so what Teda is really all about. Teda is the Anaychi Hashem. Teda is the core essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We gave the example the other day of a professor which comes in to present his essay, to make a presentation, and in the, you know, he comes in, takes off his coat, and asks anybody or his accomplices, could you hang up my coat? And two minutes later, he starts his essay. Nobody is going to repeat that presentation by saying, could you hang up my coat? Because that's everybody says that. Everybody does that. That's inferior. That's not this which personifies this deep thinker, deep um, uh, intellectual, which is this professor. You see it in his presentation, the beginning, middle, end, especially when you see the connection of the beginning and the middle end, you come, whoa, this is deep. The fact that it's coming from the same vocal cords, hang up, please hang up my coat or my hat or so on, um, that there's nothing to do with who he is, he or she is. You're dealing with, of course, everything comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But as the Zayar says, that Asura Mamores, the ten sayings through which HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, which spoke, spoke creation into being, that's inferior, it's called Mili Dehedieta, literally translated cheap words, in comparison to the core of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the inner working, the inner energy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself, which is of course invested in Teda, or that's what Teda is all about. So when you learn Yid, learns Teda, of course Teda is Chesed. 
it draws the infinite kind of atomic or beyond atomic and infinite kindness, infinite energy rather, of HaKadosh Baruch Hu into Eilam, into the world. Through a Yid which sits in Eilam Hazah, learns Torah and complies with Hashem's mitzvahs. Okay? Mimina, it makes sense. But what's this Eish Das Lama? Even one word, one passing, we said, you know, like sometimes you find a contradiction from one place to the other. This is within one line. Tejah said, Mimina Eish, like he gave the examples of directions and directions. Go there. No, it's there or there. It's Mimina or it's Eish. Eish is, of course, Gvura, which is the opposite of Chesed. How could Tejah say, Mimina Eish Das Lama? That the dust, the Torah, which is our dust, which will, today is to be translated religion, which means the Torah would be the dust, which is given over Lomit to Am Yisrael, is Mimina from Hashem's hand, Eish. It's Mimin, Chesed, or Eish, it's Gura. Again, you could see this in the previous class. We're trying to say this a bit, uh, with a bit of brevity, but yeah, it's taken a, little, a, a, a bit of brevity at least. Um, said the, 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 the mimin is the chesed, the eish is of course the glory. So how could teira be associated with chesed and glory? Now chesed makes sense, because that's what teira is, drawing the, this, this atomic energy from HaKadosh Baruch Hu into Eilam. But what about the eish? What about the gvura? Why would teira be associated with gvura? Gvura would be the opposite of chesed. Discipline, given the difference of fire and water, one would be chesed, and one would be gvura. Um, with withdrawn, withdraws. Gvura is milmato lemailo, with the terminology of Kabbalah Chsidus, like Eish actually is milmato lemailo. It removes, it removes, it is the opposite nature of the benevolence and giving, and also in associated in conjunction with this the idea of discipline. Discipline is restraint, holding back. How would that be associated with Teda? Teda, it makes so much sense, Teda is Chesed, so that's explaining it. Now, before that, again, you see in the previous class, Dr. Rebbe speaks about is chesed, is chesed. There's two types of chesed. One, a chesed associated with Eilam, a lim, more limited chesed. And one is a chesed which is associated with the Ein Sof. It's the infinite chesed, which is not limited to the factors and parameters of Eilam, of literally translating the world, which is about limitation. Again, see the previous class. We're not going to repeat everything we said in the previous class. It's a click away, the first class of the um, of Igeris, uh, of the 10th epistle, which is the final, in other words, the one just under this class is Yud. You could see with Al-Tarebbe how he begins, I think the Pasik, Chazdei Hashem Kilisabnu. There's Chazdei Hashem, two types of Chesed, Chesed Elam, Chesed um, Chesed uh, Ilo, Rav Chesed, again, we should just go on, because you can see the previous classes, uh, all the previous classes, and focusing on Pedic view, it's one class prior to this one, so we're holding, Peter Shremach Ketan, Stalter explains that, starts with explaining the association with Tehidu, with Chesed, so we just explained it briefly, but Stalter says, let's focus in what a mitzvah is all about, mitzvahs are called the limbs of a Kodesh Baruch that's why, actually, you see in the end of Pedic Dalet, al points out in a number of places in Tanya, a number of places, he ends up famously in the end of Pedic Mem, hey, Rukuti Amorim, click away the description of Tayyid Mitzvahs, what transpires when he learned Tayyid Mitzvahs, it's, it's, it's phenomenal this, the description of what takes place when he learns Tayyid with the the closeness, that intimate closeness, al uses expressions of intimacy when Yid understands with his, of course, with his mind, with his intellect, his cognitive faculties, appreciate a Gemara, a Mishnah, a Taisus, a Rosh, any part of Taita, and be, understands it thoroughly, his mind is becoming intimate with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He is becoming, through his mind, intimate with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The mitzvahs are about embracing HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Every mitzvah he does, there is, if you had the right lenses, you would see the embrace, the hug of yourself in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Really? I know mitzvahs bring me close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Mitzvahs I obey. When I do a mitzvah, I obey this what Hashem told me to do. And that's very special, of course. But the hug, an embrace. So yes, the Alter brings a Pasuk. In the end of Pedic Dalud, the Mekuti Amorim, again, a click away. The fourth, yeah, the fourth chapter in the first side of Mekuti Amorim. V'minay techapkeinu. Ha-melech mechapke bezrei. It says the king is hugging you. And you're hugging the king. You're in an embrace with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. 
Whoa, that's an additional expression of closeness. Yes, this is what the Zayir tells us. And Al Tarebi explains it so many times in this in Sefer Tanya Kadisha, the Holy Sefer Tanya, the entire Chsidis is which this was Chsidis came to point out. The, what happens when a Yid learns Taito, what happens when a Yid does a mitzvah. And in general, that, uh, in general, that you know, close relationship that a Yid can is meant to have with a Kodesh Baruch and does have with a Kodesh Baruch And of course, part of the product broader scheme, not only the Yid himself hugging a Kodesh Baruch becoming one with a Kodesh Baruch Hu, but bringing that oneness into a world. A Yid has to be a, a light over the nations, but not only the nations sharing the information, but really bringing the light to the nations, ultimately to the entire world, to the world itself is transformed into a bright world from a Eilam, which is the Lashon Hel and the Hester, like we brought from the Gemara, Oilam has the connotation of concealment, but eventually the light opens up, and there's a total fusion of creation and creator, creator and creation, which we say every single day in Aleinu, the end of Aleinu, the end of Alkein, Hashem becomes the land of the entire, not only Beis Medrash or the Yeshiva, Kol Ha'aretz, the land becomes a place which is Hashem's reign is sensed and felt, the entire land, again, not the Beis Medrash, the Kol Yeshiva, the land is filled with the knowledge of a Baruch the total fusion of creator and creation. And that comes through the Yid, learning Taira, becoming one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, intimately one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the embrace of the Yid HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That energy is, draw, is invested and in, in, infused into the world, starting from not only, again, a preaching message, but a real viable message, a real vibrant, better said, message which is felt by the nations of the world. It says, the Pasik says, and the Navi says that one day it's going to be that it would be a clear language, it would be a total transformation by the nations of the world and the entire world to call with one language, with a clear language of, of, of submission to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu one service truly serving service, a world which is completely recogni- recognizes its creator. Every part of the Eilam eventually would recognize its creator. Mala, Mala also means not half full, not three quarters full, but the world will be full of the knowledge of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, like the ocean covers, like the water covers the ocean bed. This is a Pasuk HaMayim Yom HaChasa, the conclusion of that very verse. This is what Tate all is all about. Tate is to bring Chais into the world. But what is the Eish? message. So the al Tareb again, he speaks about the idea that mitzvahs are the limbs of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. When you do a mitzvah, you're embracing a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Now, the al Tareb in Pei Chav Gimel, again, a quick way, he explains it a little more deeper. He says, we look at a limb, Baruch Atah, you know, Shakur Mizayim. Tareb says there, when you look at a, a, a limb's connection with a soul, how much is any the limbs and organs of a human being? How the human being connection connected to it to its soul? And I don't mean to say the godly soul, simply the, the nefesh chayunis, the soul which gives us life. So even right now, as my hand is moving, just without it, it instinctively, it doesn't need to, of course. But you know, instinctively, when one tries to explain something, sometimes the 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 the, the, the head would follow. Does it take time from my mind? To, till it gets to my fingers or to my hand or to any limb of the person which is always in movement, in expression, in order they should come into movement and expression? No, it's instantaneous. It's instinctive. Why so? And the answer is, because the limb is so bottled, so one with a soul. The soul is expressed into, in, via the limb, and again, that's why it's instinctive. That's why it is. Uh, it is. Uh, it, it doesn't. It's not a matter of a decision. It just because the limb expresses the soul, because the, the oneness of the, the, the any limb of the healthy human being with the soul is. You know, you, sometimes you put two things together. They're not really one. They can come close, and they could become very close, but is it a one entity? 
Usually not. When it comes to the limb and the soul, the, the reason why it's instinctive is because the limb is a true keli to the nefesh. The nefesh expresses itself in the limb, and therefore it's not a decision by the nefesh. Move your hand. I must have moved my hand maybe too, much, too many times in the last 30 seconds, but at least it demonstrates this idea that all those movements are spontaneous or instinctive, and um, the reason why they're instinctive is because the limbs are so much connected to the soul. The soul doesn't have to make the decision. Could you move your hand because for whatever reason you feel it's important to move your hand when you explain a certain idea, which probably you don't. <laughs> but the soul doesn't send signals and then it expresses, the, the limbs express the soul signals. No, it's the connection. Uh, the, the limbs are really so close and so one with the soul, the soul expresses itself through the body, through the limb. And that's why it, it, it expresses itself, so to say, spontaneously or without any, without any introduction, without any decision. It's instinctive. This is the, the, the message, this is the Explanation of the Altar but there in the 23rd chapter of Lukuti Abarim, which was the first segment, again, a click away. What the Altar is getting at, of course, when you say that the mitzvahs are the limbs of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and when I do a mitzvah, I embrace HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so then one would say, yeah, it's not really HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's the limbs of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So I'm not really embracing HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Embracing his Avarim, his limbs, he decided... One of his limbs is going to be called Mitzvah Tefillin. The other Mitzvah limb is going to be called the Lulav and Esrig, or the Sukkah, or the Mezuzah, or any other 613 Mitzvahs, or 248, which would be the positive Mitzvahs as an example. Okay, so he decided, he, the soul, which is a, the soul of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, which is a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the core of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, as we just explained, the difference of Teda and the energy of Teda, and the energy of which a Kodesh Baruch Hu invested into a world devoid of Teda. This is the core of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, fine. But Akkadosh Baruch Hu didn't really connect to us. We're not really embracing him. We're connecting to his limbs. It's a great connection because it's Hashem's limbs and I would always love to embrace, have a good embrace with Akkadosh Baruch Hu. Granted, but is this Akkadosh Baruch Hu himself? And the answer is yes and yes again because when you say the, the connection of a limb to the soul, it's, there's such a oneness and that's the reason why it doesn't take time. It's not a dictate of one entity dictating another entity. There's so one that it's, this is the reason why it's just kind of automatic and instinctive. So when you embrace HaKadosh when you do the mitzvah, the godly energy is totally manifest in that mitzvah. Hashem's soul, to be even clearer, which is the message there of the Alter Rebbe, Chav Gimel alluding to this idea over here, the soul of a Kodesh Baruch is right there in the mitzvah. The mitzvah is a container, is a limb to the nefesh, just like any other limb is a container or expresses, instinctively expresses the soul, the nefesh of the, the soul of the human being. Lahabdal, you talk about a Kodesh Baruch, the mitzvah is that, has that oneness with Hashem's soul. So when you do a mitzvah, yes, you're embracing a Kodesh Baruch. To say it, which is very a simple example, when you want to embrace somebody, you don't start saying, you know, I don't feel the soul because I only feel the hand, which is of course nonsense. But there, you have to start saying, you know, the embrace because there's a willingness of the other party to embrace you, so you feel their soul in the embrace, and you look at the actual physical embrace. Just something which is exp expresses physically that oneness which the positive energy of both of you are invested in that embrace. Okay, that's fine. But it's much deeper than that. When you talk about, and, and in essence, it's really by extension, it's that idea. Because why does this hand, why was one embrace with a hand? Why the hand? Why not with one's uh, jacket or sweater or, or, or shoe? shoe? It, why... Why is it that the limbs come together? The answer is because, in essence, the limbs are an expression of that soul, which is right now willing and have a, has a good feeling to embrace the other part. Of course, it works with a good feeling. That's why when a person has to show him, does his sins, in the end of the day, he is, establishes that about face, 
relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, just like in any relationship. It doesn't matter. It's not a matter of a closeness, a physical closeness. Is the desire there in that embrace? And if it's not, it means nothing. And sometimes it's counterproductive that we can only appreciate. And when it comes to Kodesh Baruch Hu, similar, that's why actually even Hashem sometimes in the Navi says, when you're doing the mitzvahs, I'm not interested because you sin to me and gravely in other areas. And all of a sudden, Hashem, let's have a good embrace. No, I'm not really interested in what the Ramam writes before he gives us tshuva. Hashem, Chaman Litzlan, hard to even say to quote the Ram, Hashem tears up the mitzvahs in front of him, but it makes so much sense. Someone offended someone publicly and then he ask, you know, I'm going to the store, can I get you a bottle of water? No, don't get me nothing. You just embarrass me in front of so many people and it takes time and there has to be a formal apology, which is, of course, i.e., the idea of tshuva. He returns to Kodesh Baruch Hu. becomes the greatest gift Kodesh Baruch extends to Am Yisrael, the ability to have that appeasement of Kodesh Baruch Hu should want to connect with me, want to embrace me, want to have that embrace with me. Because other than that, exactly like the Navi says, well, you're doing mitzvahs, you did so many things to aggravate me, and all of a sudden you want to embrace? No, it doesn't work that way. So, of course, there has to be a good feeling when there is an embrace. But the re- there's a reason why the arm, as an example, is a way that a person embraces. Because in the arm, there's the energy of the person's soul. But here, the Altenabu goes deeper. Every single limb is a keli, is a container. This is this not only a container as two separate entities, but when you see that instinctiveness which exists within the limbs in its connection to the soul, and therefore they're always in movement and always in expression, that tells you that really the limbs are really one with the nefesh. Just to parenthetically note, I mean, if you see the Alter Rebbe goes there, he says, at the end of the day, in comparison to Teda, the connection that he has to Teda, this is still called two different entities because in the end it's a limb which is one with the soul. So you, you, you word it, you, when you word it, you see the difference. The Lashon of the Alter Rebbe there, in Perich of Gimel, the Alter Rebbe introduces the oneness which transpires when a Yid learns Teira, that union with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in a number of places in Tanya, again, Perich of Gimel would be one, that same chapter, 23, 37, and of course the first Perich Hay. The, the fifth chapter, Lukuti Amorim, where, uh, again, it's all a click away, the famous three places, and other places as well. We spoke about the end of Memhei, the 45th chapter, where the Altarebbe, such a description of what happens when he learns Tehidah. But you see, generally, in these three places, Hei, Chav Gimel, 5, 23, and 37, the Altarebbe describes what transpires, what happens when he learns Tehidah. And there, Itaka does say that in the end of the day, this is a limb with his one with Hashem's nefesh, the Tehidah is the nefesh of Rabbi Kodesh Baruch himself. So when you learn Tayyid, it's not the limb which is connected to Hashem's nefesh, but it's the nefesh, the soul of the Baruch Hu, which is that soul-to-soul connection without the limbs, which is the idea of learning Tayyid. Therefore, Tayyid, the union of a Baruch Hu with a Yid who learns Tayyid, is far beyond the union with a Baruch Hu and a Yid or a Yid with, a, with, with Hashem when he does a mitzvah. But that's in compar- comparing Tayyid to mitzvahs. And again, Alter Rebbe has it in his, that very chapter in Pedic Hay, where it says, in case, there's no comparison to the union of a Yid with a Baruch when he learns Teda in comparison to the union of a Yid with a Baruch when he does a mitzvah. But when you focus on the mitzvahs, well, let's focus on the mitzvahs itself. Let's understand, a limb is one with a nefesh. And when you say these 365 mitzvahs are limbs of a Baruch you do a mitzvah, you're connecting to Hashem's soul. Yeah, that's chesed, and that's a lot of chesed. Chesed means the energy of a Kodesh Baruch which is drawing into your soul, into your being. And it's everything about you, and eventually by extension, your surrounding, your lot in this world, and the impact it's making on your animal soul and your body, and ultimately, in the grander scheme, again, in the world around you, because you just embrace that atomic energy which exists inherently in every single mitzvah, because the mitzvah is a limb to the Hashem's nefesh, to Hashem's soul. And this is, again, elaborated there. For example, there's a classic case. It doesn't send this over here formally to Chav Gimel, but we're learning this, and we can see it's paid Chav Gimel, 23rd chapter, in the Kuti Amor, in the first segment. Again, a click away. So, Pirush, Ramach, Kelim, the mitzvahs are Ramach, Kelim of Vushin Ma'ora made in Savaruch of the 248 mitzvahs are containers and garments to the light 
which comes from the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, blessed be He, the infinitely, not the Son of Mamaris, which is just like, could you hang up my coat? No, the infinite core essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is embedded in every single mitzvah, Hamalubashbahem, which is invested in them in this mitzvah. So it's the closest type of embrace of Yidu HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when he does a mitzvah. Then it adds in brackets and mayors and Yimshach Leit Chilachilu on mitzvah can end. In every single mitzvah that he does, this increases in his fear and love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So, why so? Well, of course, when you're connecting to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, one connects to any other party, there becomes an emotional connection of love. More of a sensation, an emotional connection with the party which one connects to, with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When you talk about emotional connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, yes, it's not only, we don't only robotically fulfill Hashem's mitzvahs, which we're meant to do that as well. Kabbalah says, it doesn't wait till this, the, the, the emotions come in and then, oh, then I'll put on tefillin, then I'll put up the mitzvah, and then I'll do the mitzvah, that this mitzvah, or that mitzvah, or then I'll learn to No, a yid, yes, there's a certain idea of Kabbalah's oil, of the having paid it, mem, out of the 41st chapter, famous 41st chapter. And look what the Amorim also click away with all the mitzvahs there, the whole trade of mitzvahs ought to be based on Kabbalah's oil, accepting the yoke of HaKadosh Baruch and it's not, oh, I'm going to wait till the feelings come in, then I'll do it. No, that's not the Yid's approach. In his submission, in his heart submission, to Baruch Hu, Omar Ba'yeh Hashem says, that's the way we receive the Teda, Nasa Benishma. You are Hashem, we are your people. Of course, we will submit ourselves before we get to appreciate, to understand what it's all about. In the same token, Hashem says, I don't want to be robotic. I want you to be excited with the mitzvah. Like in any relationship. Of course it's about doing what you ought to do. And a person says it like in any relationship, in a spousal relationship, well, I just want the, the feeling of closeness, but to do what I have to do as a spouse with my responsibilities, the larger responsibilities, going out and working, bringing bread to the table, find that responsibility, bringing the... Uh, finances, in other words, establishing a, 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 a stable financial state within my home for my children, from of course my spouse, my children, and the spouse's responsibility in running a home, and then there's specific day to day chores or responsibilities. Yeah, even uh, let me give you an example to do to to uh, to to um, the the the, the, the uh, taking out the uh, the um, you know bringing the the uh, the bags, the front, the, the, the garbage bag to the front, we, we say it, uh, we don't make it so explicit, taking it out on a weekly basis. This is small stuff which establishes a good, healthy ambiance in a home. Doing all the specific responsibilities which is demanded of each party. And of course, that establishes true simcha, true inner joy and elation and stability and good feeling in a home. It's the details Understandably so, and with Hakadosh Baruch Hu as well. You do what Hakadosh Baruch Hu says to do. Of course, you're and you know divided into all these mitzvahs and all these leisesev and positive mitzvahs to stay away with. This Hashem says not, and that we, He doesn't appreciate it. And beyond that, we you know leisesev is not just because Hashem. I don't like it. I don't appreciate today. In a bad mood, and maybe don't do that. No, Hashem says don't do. And Chas we do it. We're, we're, it's it's hurting. It's abhorrent to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. As al explains in the first chapters, we'll quote the Amorim, also click away. Vav and Zayin and Ches, Sif 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on, and other places in Tanya, of course. In the end of Chav Dalet, the 24th chapter, what transpires, Rechman and Salman, does he doesn't obey, and when, when a person doesn't obey, of course, it's, there's, the, there's the, 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 the neglect, and there's the breaking apart, fragmenting the relationship, like in any other relationship. You do something with the other party, he really doesn't appreciate any is disturbed by it. Of course it disturbs the entire stability of the relationship. So there's the 365 mitzvahs, negative mitzvahs, that's 248 mitzvahs. So of course these details establish the relationship which exists between Yid and Kodesh like any other relationship. Yeah, when one does one they're me- what they're meant to do, it brings stability. And it's more stability than anything else. More than just, oh, I'm just interested in the, interested in, 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 a, in a sensational environment. The emotional environment. I'm not interested in doing all the stuff I have to do as a responsible spouse, father, and so on. Spouse, mother, and so on. 
This brings true healthy stability. However, together with that, it is a deficiency when it remains robotic. It's important that there is good feeling. There's an emotional connection as well, which sometimes is meant to be expressed a little more, and sometimes less, because at the end of the day, there has to be that equilibrium between the emotion and the and the actual responsibilities between two parties. And so to the Kodesh Baruch Hu, Hashem says, Why does it have to be Vahavta? Isn't it about the stuff you want to be done? And we accept you because you are Hashem, and we said Nasa Venishma then, and we say Nasa Venishma every single day. Forget about, like it said a number of places, that Hashem was very excited about Nisra when they said the Nasa Venishma because they preceded the Nasa before the Nishma. We will do, and then we'll try to understand, appreciate, and connect to, so to say, to you based on our appreciation of you and your presentations and your mitzvahs and so on, your holy title. And and this, this great gift of you connecting to us. So the commentaries ask, would the, we would have maybe a little more points if we just said the Nasa? The whole thing that Hashem was so excited about, and compare this to Malachim, to the angels, first they said Vari, and then Lishmea be called Bekav Vari, as a famous Gemara in Shabbos. Yidin says Nasa before Nishma, we will do it, and then we will hear. But why here? Why the connection on a level of Nishma if you can remain with Nasa, which is a total submission with Akkadish Baruch? A total submission to Akkadish Baruch? without any heart and mind and so on. Or excitement. Who needs the excitement? Oh, I'm excited to become connected and to, to have that emotional connection with you, sensational connection with you. No, that's about me. I just don't have to really be part of the equation. It's about Hashem, what you want, and I'm there for you. Why do we have to have the Nishma? Comes tight and says no. That Hashem, they would not get more points, so to say, if they would only say Nasa. Because Hashem really wants that Nishma being part of the equation. Hashem wants it to be a sensational relationship. Hashem wants it to be an emotional relationship. He wants the submission without asking questions, but He wants the Nishma. Therefore, Hashem says in the Torah, Hashem I want you to love Hashem, your God. And we say it every single day in davening. And Hashem says, Hashem I want you to fear, meaning, it's not a matter of fear, like, Fear of something which is harming me or chas v'shalom. It's about reverence. I want you to have that inner reverence of Baruch Hu, says Hashem in His holy title. And a few times Hashem says, I want it to be, to be love. I want it to be a sensation of love. And, and, and we say, Hashem, we say, someone's oh, Hashem, it's not a badge. Or it's just, I'm going to shuckle a lot when I say, it means a love. There's an expansion in your heart, just like when someone has a love to somebody. There is an expansion in his physical heart, in their physical hearts. And Hashem demands that from the Yid. I want you have to have a sensational love to me, Hashem. And we say this a few times a day. Because Hashem wants, I gave you rich faculties, I gave you a mind, I gave you a heart. Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekin Hashem Contemplate. And think about it. Identify that oneness. Ponder on that oneness of Akkadosh Baruch Hu and how close Akkadosh Baruch Hu is and how the real, the, that everything is Hashem and Hashem is everything, whatever the Hashem Echad, the Hizbeinanus, the, the, the meditation presented in so many Sforim, particularly in Sifri Chassidus, and yes, particularly the Prati Prati, since Chassidus Chabad, we spoke about this many times, the essentiality to learn Chassidus Chabad to have any shaykh as the true connection to the true Achdus Hashem. Starting from the Rebbe Shaykh of Amunah, we married it to learn. It's on this site as well. <clears throat> and the presentation of Chassidus Chabad, and what Achdus, what Hashem Echad is all about. And a person, Shema, he ponders in a very organized, structured manner, of course, you'll come to a true sensational love of the Kodesh Because Hashem says, I created you with these rich faculties. Don't put them down. I created with mind and I created with heart. It ought to be utilized in the service of Hashem. So Hashem says, I want you not only to do what you ought to do, I want you to establish a love towards me. I want you to have a reverence, to have that Yira Shamayim. 
ירדם ירא שמיים. And of course, in the sight of Av, a chesed, in the sight of Av, to love, to have a true love to Akhosh Baruch. For that matter, in Al Tereb, there's an interesting reference in the in the Ramah, Menuchas Chulah, Pedik Yud, Halacha Dalit Hey Vav, speaks about it there such a so the terminology, <coughs> the uh, the terminology, the phraseology of the Al Tereb there in uh, in those halachas. It becomes very, very specific. Ava says Aisha says the true love of the Yitok Hosh Baruch has to be a real, real Ava. So the Altarebbe says over here, where does this Ava come from? So the truth of the matter is that Yitok Hosh Baruch is part of a Kosh Baruch. So there's always an innate and inherent closeness of Yitok Hosh Baruch, but we're not talking about that innate and inherent closeness of Yitok Hosh Baruch. That's always there. Like a child to a father, for example. But we're talking about a passionate, fervor and passionate love of Yitzhak Hashem. Where does that come from? So one works on that, of course. Shema Yisrael Shem Elokim Shemachot. Famous word of the Magi. How could you command a love? How could you tell a Yid about this Shemachot? Not to go off over here, which we're doing a little too much. Let's move on. But like the, just important to note, we did mention this in the past. The Magi of the Al Tarebi says, "How could you command on love? Love is or you love, or you don't. And if you don't, the command won't help." Tell a Yid. You love, you don't let put on the tefillin anyways. Do that mitzvah, have the mitzvahs on the door. Okay, there a command could work. But love, a command cannot work. Because if I love, I love. And if I, I don't need a command. And if I don't love, a command won't, of course, help. You can't command a love. So Magid, the famous Magid, the Alter says, no, no, that's why the Pasuk speaks Shema Yisrael. You pondered in a very structured, healthy manner on Hashem Elikein Hashem Echot. Consequently, Vahapis Hashem Elikein like anything, you understand something thoroughly. This triggers the heart. Depends what you're what you're pondering on in your relationship with that the person. If it's something which is, I mentioned this in the past, an idea. You gravitate to idea once you understand it thoroughly, and you appreciate how much it can contribute to your well being, one way or another. So you gravitate to it. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad Ve'Alhafta. Consequently, you love a Kodesh Baruch So there is, of course, through the Shema Yisrael Bainanus. Pondering, meditating in the grandness of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. But there's something which the Atrebbe says in this bracket when you do the mitzvah, because you're embracing with a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the nefesh of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the soul of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, is becoming manifest in that connection which you just established by doing that particular mitzvah. But what it does also, from that light of Hashem's nefesh, manifesting from Hashem's nefesh, that ultimately. Or that brings you also the fear, the reverence, and love which exist in that relationship with the Kodesh Baruch, which is inherent in every single mitzvah, because the mitzvah is a limb of the Kodesh Baruch, drawing the nefesh of the Kodesh Baruch. That is what this short bracket is all about. However, the Altarebbe goes on now. And with this, again, so with this all tells us and explains us why the Yemina of the Kodesh Baruch. But what about the Eish Das Lamai, the fire, the Gvura? As we asked, expand, 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 expand the, expand on the question in last week's class, but again, we just ask, how could it be the same with Mimin or Tzaish? And we could appreciate not only the fact that it's a contradiction, but we see the Yimin so much. We see this as a chesed. We're connecting to the soul, to the core of HaKadosh Baruch drawing the light of the core of HaKadosh Baruch into myself, into, my, into every part of me, and in my surrounding, and into the world in its entirety. Whoa, this is a lot of chesed. But where's the Yish? The Rebbe says, there's Gvur here also. Why? This is where the Altar of Iraq. However, Shem Shem Azum Yislav Shet Chivim Yisgur Rosh Hashem Baruch Hu. This age, this Chesed, before it comes down and is manifest, and again in mitzvahs, and in our connection with the Kodesh Baruch Hu, via the mitzvahs, it goes through the channel of Gvura. Why so? Why is it so important that it should enter into the attribute of Gvura, the Gvura of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, which is Mechud B'Shem Eish, which is titled Fire, which is Simtsumayr Machai Sim Shabbos Menim Tzabarucho, which is the concealment, the the condensement, the contraction of the light and the energy which comes from the inner, from the light of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. be He. Why should it go through that Gvura, that Simtsum, that condensement of the light of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, which we know the difference of Chesed and Gvura explained in so many places? Actually, again, Shaykh Bemuna in the beginning, second, third, fourth, third, fourth chapter, fifth chapter, six, seven. It's all about the chesed, the gvura. Gvura is simtsum. Gvura is 
this the idea of discipline. Chesed is giving, what is discipline? Discipline is a cover over the chesed. They can understand it on every single level. You don't have to elaborate. Again, if you were looking for elaboration in so many places, use your own mind how Gura is the tzimtzum or chesed is giving extension. Gura is condensing that. Gura is covering up. That's the point of discipline. It's not just an open check. It's not about it. it just If it's a check or if it's in any type of relationship of giving to children, there has to be giving, chesed, predominantly. A parent has to be... Uh, Predominantly kind, express kindness to children, but it always is with a covering of Vura. There has to be discipline because that's when you have a healthy kindness, not kindness which will bring destruction. That's the point of Vura, which again puts on that cap of discipline, which is the point of Vura. Vura is fire, no matter It's not giving like water, it's withdrawing, covering. The notion of discipline is all about that. But here we're talking about. Chesed of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, which is not stama chesed. Okay, just give them an extra toy or too many toys. No, you have to put on the cap of gvura, which is symptom, which is contraction, which is condensing the expression of chesed in order to have a better result with children, as an example. But here we talk about the godly light of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. We're not talking about gadgets at all. We're talking about the godly light of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Why do you need the gvura? Where's the gvura come in? It's about the connection of Hakadosh Baruch Hashem want. That's why He created. All of creation, many, many chapters, famously in the 41st chapter, which we just mentioned, towards the beginning, it's all, before that, of course, the idea that HaKadosh Baruch created all that in order that Yid should connect with HaKadosh Baruch on this level, in this world. There's a master plan that you learn to you do mitzvahs, you're drawing the core essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu throughout all the worlds and ultimately this to this world, which this is where the purpose is, in order to transform this world, the world become an abode for HaKadosh Baruch Hu because the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu becomes manifest and transparent, even in this very physical world. Well, that's chesed, and so that's the program, that's the plan. Why? Do we, where's the gvura come in? And it goes on, he says, yes, they have to go through that gvura pattern, through that gvura, um, uh, if you will, cover-up, or that gvura sh- a facade, veneer, why? The answer is, in order that it should be able to invest in the actual mitzvahs, which, most of the mitzvahs are with the physical, the mundane. Kitzitzis utfilim. Where did tzitzis come from? Yeah, we look at tzitzis. It's so holy. I mean, this was sheep of that. This is a uh, rather the hair of that sheep on the farm. Tfilins, the beautiful tfilin, looking so holy. The sefer Torah, which the mezuzah, the, the sefer Torah, which is beyond, you know, holy of holies, if you will. Zuzah Torah. But look, what is that parchment? Yeah, that parchment was once part of an animal, skin of an animal which is really the nitty-gritty of Eilam Haza, and that becomes a mitzvah, and so too the significant majority of the mitzvahs are with the physical. And in order that light, that brightness of HaKadosh Baruch the core essence of HaKadosh Baruch should come down and to be manifest and to establish the, its container with the physical, with the core physicality and the dignity of Elam Hazah, of course it had to go through that veneer of gvura, of discipline, if you will, or that, can, that this which eclipses, to a certain extent, the brightness of a Kodesh because it had to be manifest in the physical. As we give the examples so many times, Someone wants to read something and he opens the light. If the light is going to be just super bright, the person will not be able to read anything. To the contrary, if the person gets lost when there's too much of a bright, really true bright light, and God forbid, because of the bright light, and it uh, could have negative Rahmanul Islam, negative ramifications as well when it's too bright. So what do they do? They contain it with a certain amount of cover-up, so to say, if it's the bulb, if it's that, uh, that many watts, and so on and so forth, that the light could be contained, that the person could be able to connect with the light and appreciate the light. This great light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu has to enter into the physical, if it's parchment or the, 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 um, this, the, the wool which is sheared from the animal, 
of course it had to establish, it had to be established through that veneer of Gvura in order to be manifest in the Maisa HaMitzvah. So if Taita Mitzvah is just about, oh, that free or that, that uh, sensational, emotional love of the Kodesh Baruch Hu, then, yeah, not necessarily we would think so much that it has to go so much through the Gvura. You know, Tanev says even that has to go through the Gvura because a, it's impossible that a human being can have that, you know, without any covering, Container which would contain the love and fear of a Kosh the way the Nisham is before experienced before it entered this body. It's not be if the body doesn't is not able to contain, not able to, to comprehend, to tolerate that infinite love. For that matter, when Hashem gave the Tayyid, it says that Parcha Nishmas and says that the Nisham of the Yid has expired because or has left his body because it was too much, it was too over, it was overwhelming. Because it's not possible that Neshama, which is the best in the body, should have that just that infinite ability or that that, that energy of a Baruch Hu, which is invested in the mitzvah of Yiras Hashem, reverence of a Baruch Hu, love of a Baruch Hu, without any cover up, without any container to make it soothable to the human heart, the human heart, which is of course the contained heart, human mind, and so on. That itself that needs that gura dimension. How much more so when you're talking about? The actual mitzvahs, if it's tzitzvahs, if it's tefillin, and all the, the significant majority of Am Yisrael's mitzvahs, or the mitzvah Hashem give Am Yisrael is associated with the physical, if it's a sukkah, the lulav and esri, and in matzah, some pesach, and so on, through mismaisers, it's all with the physical, so of course it had to go through that veneer of gvura, or connect with the veneer of gvura in order to connect with this very physical world that, in the end of the day, it's that mitzvah, and with that precision, we know there's precision in mitzvahs, famous al Tadeva has it in which we didn't learn yet, famous chapter called David, Zmiris, Kari, so we can look at it wherever you're learning Tanya. Worthwhile to see the exactitude of performance of a mitzvah. One little detail makes all the difference if you're connecting, if you're not connecting, or if Hashem's energy is being manifest or not. David, it's the final part of Tanya, Kuntur And again, we're doing the fourth right now, we didn't get there yet. And as Hashem, in a good in a good tisha, one day, but in the in in in, in uh, you can find it anywhere. It's an important chapter because, of course, there's exactitude and precision in performance of a mitzvah. So it should establish itself first to touch down in this physical world. Of course, it has to have that veneer of gvura. That's why it says mimina. Yes, it's all about chesed, but eish. There has to be the dimension of eish in order that it could connect with this very physical world. So that today we go to that's the H dimension. It says if it's tzitzis, if it's tefillin, korbanis, sacrifices, the animal on the altar, the animal is the animal. And that's the greatest connection with the Yitkin Abba, the Kosh Baruch Hu, it's a korban, it's the only mitzvah which has the word kiruv, which will close to the Kosh Baruch Hu, and the Yitkin brings up korban, that's why it's so unfortunate, you know, the basic meaning is as of yet, hopefully we'll have it soon. Or now, not only soon, because the korban was the the, 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 the epic, so to say, in the relationship with the Yid and the Kodesh Baruch Hu, this was, this was the, the climactic type of connection with the Yid and the Kodesh Baruch Hu. But how did it come across with an animal, a goat, a sheep, and the ram, a cow? Really? That brings you the Korban to Kodesh Baruch Hu. So, yes, it does, because that's Hashem established. But in order that it should connect with the physicality of the Ramazah, it has to go through the idea of Gvura. Because it was the overwhelming light without any container, without anything covering over that light to allow it to enter into the physical parameters which make up the performance of the mitzvah. It wouldn't be a starting point of the connection. So it has to be established. It has to come into Elam Hazah and establish itself in this physical parameters. Of course, you need the middle of Gvura. As a Korban, you give it stoka. Even charity also has its parameters. There's 10%, 20%. This is all numbers, which are associated with Gvura, of course. To, to appreciate this idea of the Chesed and the Gvura, again, we can elaborate so much more, but you can see it in the Shaykh of Emunah, third chapter, fourth, starting from the fourth, for that matter. Um, fifth, sixth, seventh. Fifth, sixth, and seven. The Chesed and Gvura. The Gvura is... It says, Hashem Alikim, like there's the sun, and there's the cover of the sun, which allows the sun to be appreciated down below. 
If there wouldn't be that mugging, everything would have been consumed into the heat of the sun, the brightness of the sun, to the heat of the sun. So then you wouldn't have a sun which is illuminating creation. There is no creation because it's burnt into the energy and gases of the sun. So Hashem says, Kishemesh puts on the mugging over the sun in order to be a world, should appreciate the warmth the, and the brightness of the sun. And so too, that energy, the nefesh of HaKadosh Baruch to be manifest in Hazat in order to be expressed and can be in connection to be made through that mitzvah, of course it had to go through Gvura in order that it should be able to connect with the physicality of Elam Hazat, which that would be the container through which the Yid performs the mitzvah in order to be connected to Hashem's nefesh. Thus the idea of Eish, Gvura, even though Teira is predominantly Chesed, that's why Chesed comes before Miminai, but yet it has to connect to Elam Hazat, so there's Eish, does Lama. Rebbe it goes on, as we just said, even mitzvahs, even mitzvahs which are associated with the spirituality of man. And they don't have to so much touch base with the specific, you know, the specific uh, establishments of Elam Haza, like a suk or a lul of an esser, but fill in other examples that he gave. For example, the sensation of Yiro, fear of a Baruch Hu, Ava, Lava, Kodesh Baruch Hu, Sadir, apparently, what do you need the Gvura? If it's a hard expression, it's also a limited, there's a limited, there's a cap on that as well. Cap would be the good word. It's the light, the shemesh, the mugging is the cap. There's a chesed, you have to have the cap of gvura in order to be, it should be able to establish the connection with Elam Hazas, with the mitzvahs are performed. So the Altarim is even there, you need a cap, why? Because, it's not just without the cap, just infinite expression, manifestation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which my heart connects to. It's impossible. Because a enormous love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu without any limit and measurement, man cannot handle and tolerate that in their heart. And together with that, be connected to his body as a living human being, even one moment. If he had that Infinite uh, love and fear to Akush Baruch, love and reverence of Akush, reverence of Akush Baruch, and love to Akush Baruch. It's impossible. We saw it every day. Think my menazal shem shas man teiru shal yisus da'as ol kusiv baruch by matan teiru. When you give me the teiru, when then there was a revelation of the of godliness of Akush Baruch, the ain't sorry and so baruch. And there was a full manifestation of the infinite light of Akush Baruch. That's what happened when Hashem said, "Anoichi Hashem lekech by the Ten Commandments." When Hashem's uh, was totally the total manifestation of a core of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Neichi Hashem Likachad came into these words of the Ten Commandments. But then there was a totally, so to say, gloves off, caps off revelation of Hakadosh Baruch What happened? Parach Hamishmos and their souls have ascended because it would be impossible for that connection on an infinite level of love and fear or revelation of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, which would have that. No non cap type of love and fear because Baruch Hu. No, it's impossible that could should happen, and the neshama should be connected to the body. And that's the point that a person should have that as soul is connected to the body. There, he should establish that love of Baruch Hu, fear of Baruch Hu. But there, also there has to be that gvura dimension in order that it should be able to be with the person should withstand that expression. And there should be a disconnect of soul and body, which is the idea of Klesa Nefesh. We spoke about it many times. The Rebbe has it also in a number of places in Makuti Amorim, the notion of Pedic Nun. Famously, we spoke about this as well. Because when the person feels that, so to say, the limitless appreciation and connection with the Kosh could cause a part, a parting of soul from body, Klesa Nefesh, the outpour, the yearning, the connection of the soul leave the body behind, the expiration of body, which is the story of Nadav Avihu, famously, as the Alter Eir Chaim HaKodesh explains in the Parsha of the children of Aaron, or Nadav Avihu, what happened, because they had such a love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, their bodies remained behind, they expired, because there was no container which allowed, so to say, the fusion of body and soul to experience this love and fear of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It was overwhelming, and therefore the body expired. In order that the, the soul should have that love of the Baruch Hu is connected to the body, so it has to be a limited type of, so to say, exposure of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, which that's where my that's where the gvura, the cap of gvura, limited exposure of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, in order that my mind, as I am soul invested in body, healthily 
to be able to think, ponder, meditate, and establish a true, genuine, yes, a fervent relationship with Kodesh like I have nothing else in my life other than Kodesh but yet, it's soul connected to body. And therefore, even Abba Vigir needs that cap of Buddha. How much more so? So many mitzvahs. Now, the Rebbe explains one more de- detail over here before we conclude. And because, Vihine, we start the next part of the Fisha Mitzvah Nitin Lo No Adei Slavis Mitzvah Kavur Mitzim Tzmaru Lechem Reva Mitzvah Yeshla and Shir Mitzum Tzum. Therefore, not only it connects, Al Tarebbe saying, not only it connects with the physical, but therefore, even after it connects with it connects with the physical, the idea, the notion that there is measurement which exists inherently, if you will, with mitzvahs. The mitzvahs, again, the exactitude, the precision, but no, it's just the relationship, I love you and embrace. Why is there has to be so much perfection and, and, and discipline in the performance of the mitzvah itself? The, the sukkah is 20 amas and one more inch, then the whole sukkah is puzzle. 20 cubits, one more inch, it's puzzle. Really? Let's get over that. It's a relationship. I love you, Hashem, and well, let's not major the minors, as they say. The tefillin exactly in the two letters touch. So I love you, Akash Baruch Hu. That's why I'm putting on tefillin. So if inside that box, the two letters touch, the whole tefillin is no good. Can we get over that? No. In mitzvahs, there is exactitude. And the measurement of the mitzvahs, and the four by four by tefillin, and the lulav as a measurement, and the sukkah as a measurement, the shafer as a measurement, the whole notion of measurement, and again, that precision and exactitude which exists in mitzvahs, is because of its connection to Gura. So the Al-Tarebbe adds, and we'll continue best from learning this this coming week, the Al-Tarebbe adds additional to its connecting to the physical world, which of course it needs that cap of Gura. The whole idea of the exactitude which exists in mitzvahs is also because it connects to Gura. Even though, predominantly, Tayyid is about Chesed, because every mitzvah, when you do it the way Hashem wants you to do it, because it went through that Gura of HaKadosh Baruch it's not my Gura just putting it on because I have to maintain that so to say, unbreakable relationship with the Kosh Baruch Hu has to be connected to the way I am soul invested in body, remain healthy, and so on. No, there's the Gvura of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Of course, it's holy Gvura, but Gvura it remains. Even though, and again, to establish its connection to the physical, and there, there on the measurement, and again, exactitude and precision which exist in mitzvahs, even though the overall, of course, Tehid is about chesed. Drawing, when you do it the right way, exactly the way Hashem wants you to do it, you're drawing the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu into a world. And Hashem help that this infinite light should, again, which Am Yisrael is bringing into the world thousands of years, should ultimately penetrate and immediately transform the, 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 uh, to see the fruit of Am Yisrael's labor, particularly Mesiris Nefesh, the self-sacrifice of Am Yisrael, for so many years to connect to that infinite light, which should pierce through and break through all the concealments, and we should have finally, very speedily, a very redeemed world, a world removing any evil, any any negativity, any negative energy, and a redeemed world, a world which is about kindness and about benevolence and about namely holy divine kindness, which this is what Taita is all about, meaning Taita's Chesed. We should merit it, the whole transformation. We should see the Malchus of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Kol HaOret, the reign of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the entire land, the Malchus of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the entire land, the full of the knowledge of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In good spirit, the Simcha Retum Levav, good spirit, and gladness of heart, and a, re- a redeemer of a full world, not a partial world, or not redemption a par- to part of, a partial redemption, a full redemption. We look forward to continuing this coming week. Have a wonderful.